Today we are outside in the woods. We are doing a little bit of, I don't know, for risk of sounding extremely modern and hippified, trail maintenance is what we are doing. <laughs> um, we do have a little trail that comes out through here and it's pretty well maintained because we come on it a lot, but some logs and things like that have fallen in it. So dad come out here, brought the chainsaw, cutting some logs out, clearing you know, a little bit of underbrushing and Corey and Austin are actually at their house, at Austin's house, uh, looking, thinking about getting a fence, gonna have somebody come out and talk to them about getting a fence to enclose part of the yard so that Olive will have somewhere to run around. Cause right now she has all the space she could have here at our house, but we still keep her on a leash because she doesn't, she's, I mean, she's been here for two weeks. We don't wanna take any risks of her getting confused, scared or running off. So they're doing the fence, we're in the woods. This is what's going on, got a little bit of sunshine. Well, my camo pants so I can blend in, but my white sweater probably does me no good. But it's my favorite sweater, so if a bear attacks me, at least I'll die in my favorite sweater. <laughs> Dad, do you think you should um, comment below if everyone thinks I should run the chainsaw? <laughs> if I could even run it, I highly doubt it. You think I could hold on to that thing and saw something? You saw this log over here if you want to, but now you gotta be careful if I stay on that. coming down the trail here you can you can somewhat see there's a path through these trees here now of course if you could be here and walk it you would definitely kind of see a distinguished way to go through here down here it's very slick and the last time we come down through here Austin fell <laughs> probably just because the leaves we are gonna go right down there though so you kind of got to run down this little um, hill here and then we are out in what we call the road. So really in my lifetime, a lot of this used to be cleared out. All these little saplings growing weren't here, but you can see like, excuse my feet to demonstrate. This is one side of the road. This is the other and it kind of goes up through here. It is beautiful today. Absolutely beautiful. I wish it was a little bit warmer, but it's beautiful. So, of course, back over here is where we have the tadpoles in the spring. It's natural spring. And in my lifetime, all of this back here, this small timber, they clear cut that. And I don't know, I was probably, I'm going to trip over here. I was probably like... 13 or 12 maybe when they clear cut it so y'all the better part of 15 years ago um anyway so now it's really small um young timber and to be 100 percent honest it's really just like a choked up mess but all of this all of that was um totally bare and it was a really good time to get in here and look for arrowheads and just different things um so we definitely did that I actually have a picture. I'm going to insert a picture. We, in the eighth grade, they made us do like the home um, egg. They, we had to take these babies home <laughs> and we had a partner and you had to take care of the baby and the baby would cry. And if you didn't take care of the baby, you had a little monitor in it and they would know. And we brought that baby with us on a hike because we wanted to go hiking. It was pretty, it we're only like however many yards from the house. But if we left the baby and it cried and we didn't like pick the baby up, soothe the baby, make it stop crying, we would get a bad grade. So we took the baby with us and we have a really sick picture. I'm gonna put it in right here. But since Corey, maybe that better. Since Corey and Austin are not here, I thought I'm gonna do a video and this isn't necessarily a day in the life of Katie because there's so many other things that I do. 
Um, most of the time, I'm, you know, I wish I could be so lucky to just come around here in the woods and goof off and not work and not do anything. However, I do find myself um, coming out here more and more. I try to come out here as much as I can and kind of just seek solace in nature, in the woods, in the quiet. Um, I love it so much. I think it's so beautiful. It's really hard to think about all the things that weigh you down and all the things you have to do that you know put pressure and stress on you when you're outside and it just feels so good to be outside so that's what i'm doing of course i'm walking toward the creek um but yeah i mean corey has been maybe more open than i have about my struggles because we all struggle i'm very tender-hearted so i get my feelings hurt easy i wish i was a little bit tougher or as tough as i make myself look but you know, I think everybody struggles and you have to find that thing, whatever that thing is for you. If it's outdoor time, if it's reading a book, if it's going to sleep, if it's hanging out with friends or going out to eat, you have to find that thing that you can do to soothe, um, kind of soothe that part of yourself that gets anxious or mad or angry or upset or whatever. You've got to kind of make new habits because the habits that you keep in your life become your life. So for me, I come down here to the creek and I find myself again and I think bigger picture, bigger picture, bigger picture because whatever it is that you're experiencing or whatever it is that you're going through, you can get so stuck in that that you can't see anything else. It's like a horse with blinders on. All you can see is whatever it is that you're dealing with, be it emotions, anxiety, bad economic situations, stress, you've got kids you've got to feed, whatever it is, you can get stuck on that and it's all you can see and then you can't see anything and then you're hopeless because um to live a life in the darkness and um without god is essentially hopeless right god is what gives us mercy what gives us faith what gives us the sustenance to survive these dark times um and if you have blinders on you're not going to see them you're not going to listen to them you're not going to be open to listening to them so it's kind of the human condition that you want to get down in that bad place and stay there because it seems easier to stay there than it does to get out but, you know, to stay there and hate your situation and be upset and all that defies all logic. And it doesn't make any sense. Um, your life is your own and it's what you make it. And you don't want to look back in 50 years and be like, look at what I did if I would have only got out of my own head. So for me, this is what I do to get out of my own head. I come down to the creek. Um, I talk to God. This is where I am with God because he made all this and he knows how much I adore and love it. So just being out here and being like, man, isn't this beautiful? Isn't just just the prettiest thing I've ever seen? I lay in my bed at night and think about the creek that's 50 feet away. That's kind of my way to praise him and be like, thank you for what you, look at this. This is beautiful. Thank you that I get to enjoy it. And getting out of my own head provides me with a lot of tools, tools to think logically, tools to see clearly, for God to tell me things because now my ears open and I'm listening. And he can tell me things that he can't tell me when I'm down in the dark because I've got my ears and my sight and all that blocked off. So anyway, this is kind of, I don't know, it's just going to turn into a spontaneous video about like what is Katie doing. And right now mom and dad are in the woods up there. They're doing the trail maintenance like I talked about for fear of sounding hippified or <laughs> any sort of modern. It's not really trail maintenance when there's like four people that are going to be on it, but Anyway, that's what they're doing. You can hear the chainsaw up there sometimes. And of course, I wandered down here to the creek. So what I could do for you guys is show you some parts of the creek that you're probably not used to seeing. You probably don't see this place much on film because I don't come up here much myself, but I will sometimes. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, it doesn't even look real. It's so beautiful. It just looks like a picture, but it's real. Here I am. Very beautiful. Look at all those rocks. So last weekend, me and a friend, we went on a hike, kind of um, that direction. And it was a little bit further of a hike than what I remembered. But I took us all the way up through there. And by the time it was said and done, we probably walked a mile or so. And um, I forgot that so many of these little smaller ridges and hollers between the main ridges carry little streams and creeks. So there's the main creek that I'm always in. And then there's these little tiny, not very big, you know, not terribly like exciting as far as like lots of rocks go. These little tiny streams that will feed a little bit bigger streams and then go into the main creek here. And I had so much fun 
doing that i forgot all about that you can see a little bit of water in there and this isn't anything very heavy but there's this is a little bit of a feeder stream and it goes right down in here into the main creek that i just showed and you can kind of see there's a little bit of a a sun spot there so you can see a gentle flow of water but you never know something could kind of wash up and get stuck in these spots uh that metal detecting video that we did the stuff that the car parts that we found that was right here um that was definitely right here You can hear it under the ground right there. I can. That's really awesome. You can see my shadow. So this you can definitely see is the road, a very clear cut road. And somewhere off in here, I'm gonna go off the road here and show you another very pretty part of the creek. Again, that I don't come too much, but I will every now and then. This looks as good of a spot as any. It's very thick in here in the summer. And you can see the black uh, gravity water pop that you can see lots of times in our videos. And there's that little gulch that kind of goes down. It's hard to see, but it's a little low place down in there. And that's kind of where that little washed up stream's at. It kind of fills this uh, depression here in the ground, this impression here that's kind of like right there. Oh man, isn't that beautiful? Oh gosh, it is. It's hard to get to. There's so many sticks in here. But we will fight the sticks because that is beautiful. This is me for size. Um, this is kind of me to give you an idea of, that's a pretty big waterfall for this creek. That's pretty big. We've had a lot of rain in North Carolina lately, so it's probably flowing a little bit heavier than normal, but that's beautiful. That's a just so pretty. Of course, no trip to the creek would be complete without looking for rocks. Um, yeah. It's a pretty rock right there. Um, I thought this one was interesting. Square. So, it goes down into another waterfall here. And then here's our gravity water pipe. And kind of a neat rock formation there. And so we end up with another pretty good sized waterfall. And these rocks in here are just awesome looking. Very cool. Very cool. Over there, is the road i don't get out in here much because in the summer it's just like incredibly grown up but i've never looked around in here to like see if i could find anything you might be able to considering it's so close to the road it's a very big saw briar i can smell chainsaw oil <laughs> and chainsaw exhaust i would like to look in the mud first to see if there's any animal tracks any deer tracks or whatever else has been up here um but yeah i mean i just don't come over here much you know 
so it's fun to get to see different stuff. This is the top of that waterfall. So that's pretty cool. I like it over there that's flat. That's what I call the fern forest when the ferns bloom. And it'll be kind of ferny in here too when they bloom. When they come back up out of the ground, I should say. Little fiddleheads. sun is shining up here. Now that's a deer track if I ever saw one. And that has been since it rained. So that's been in the last day or two. Man, look at that. Ooh, ooh. That is so beautiful. I wish you could be here, hear it, smell it. That's just beautiful. thinking kind of like what am I going to name this video that I've kind of spontaneously taken um chatting with Katie I don't know who wants to chat with Katie <laughs> I'm full of hot air I have a few smart things to say and the rest of it's just nonsense probably but but you know I think as humans we all have valuable things to say and valuable experiences to share so if I could say one thing to anyone to make them feel like hey it's gonna be all right, it's gonna be okay. We're all humans, we all struggle, but there's a lot of really good things about life too. No matter what you've been through, everybody's been through it in a small measure, a big measure, a different measure, something that looks a little different, but we're all united in that. We are all united in our human conditions and our human experiences and the desire and need for humans to be conditional. We're so conditional, we're such conditional creatures and there's only one thing that's not conditional, and that's God. That's God's love. It's so not conditional. It's so the opposite of conditional that it's actually really hard for us as humans to accept that sometimes and to latch onto that and be like, it's too good to be true. Are you kidding me? So if you are watching this, Suzanne Letford, which you might be, um, my one of my college English teachers told me one time, she said, Katie, there's two things in life that are great the great equalizers and I was like whew, very serious what are you you know what are you gonna say here and she said number one is death because death is gonna come to all of us it doesn't matter what you do what you think what you believe that's how this goes nobody gets out alive and number two is snow because snow makes even the ugliest thing pretty and I thought that was so funny and really to be honest um true but I think what I've found is even if I don't know what that one thing is, I just fake it. I just pretend. I just get up every day and say, I'm going to find that one thing I can do today to make it feel like I can do this, you know? And I also realize I feel like I have a great advantage because I've got such a wonderful family and a mom and a dad and a sister and a support system that is just every time I fall, and believe me, I fall often, they pick me up, dust me off, and set me back running. Um, and I'm so grateful for that. I'm grateful for each and every one of you because if you weren't watching this channel, if you weren't supporting us, if you weren't saying all the nice things that you say and doing all the nice things that you do, it wouldn't be possible for us to live the life that we've always wanted to live. Um, and I really appreciate that. And all the nice things that each and every one of you has sent us, letters, cards, clothes, items, just anything. Um, sometimes you worry that people will fall through the cracks, but I promise you it is felt. Every time I get a package from a subscriber and I open it, I tear up and I just think these people are so sweet and I'm so incredibly unworthy and undeserving, yet God gives and gives and gives again. And I'm the perfect face for, you know, not being perfect, for making mistakes, for being mean sometimes and being grumpy and being so quick to see what's wrong with the situation instead of what's right with the situation. So when these people send these things out of these tender places in their heart, it just reminds me of God and God's glory and what he's done and what he gives and his promise, which is, um, I'll give you everything I give my son so that you can seek eternity with me and all you've got to do is want it.
and dang if I don't want it. And sometimes I don't want it enough, but here I am, this is me. This is hanging, I'm hanging out in my woods here. Mostly I just say, I'm hungry. I'm gonna find something to eat. I'm gonna go back up the hill and see what my folks are doing. And I don't even know if I'm gonna post this video. I feel like I've rambled. I may have to say some other things, put some other things in there, but I kind of just, I don't know. It's just kind of on my heart to walk around in, uh, in the woods next to my creek with a phone on. So we'll see it. Um, and if you end up seeing this video, hang in there. Do what you gotta do to take care of you. I hope you're gonna enjoy some warm weather soon. Some warm, happy, joyful seasons are gonna come into your life and we'll catch you at the next one.